Hello and welcome to the 78th video in this series programming Chess Engine C. So we're continuing this video setting up some of the bitmasks we're going to be using to evaluate the pawns in the evaluation function. In this video we're going to set up the passed pawn and isolated pawn bitmasks. The first thing I'm going to do is add in three bitmasks into the init.c here to actually do this and call them black passed, white passed and isolated, isolated mask. And just to go through once again to make things clear in a comment how these masks will work. If I take a, a bit board again representing the state of the board and let's say for argument's sake let's call this the this time instead of although in bit board terms of the indexing this would be rank 8 here and this rank here would be rank 1. Let's flip it around so it's easier to understand. But let's say this x here represents a pawn, a white pawn on e3. And we want to know whether this white pawn is passed. Well, that means on the D file from D4, D5, D6, D7, D8, and onwards, and I've just realized that I'm missing a rank. So on the D file from D4, D5, D6 through to D8, and on the E file from E4 and to E8, and the F file from F4 to F8, if there's no black pawn, then this white pawn on, uh, that's represented by the X is passed. So in terms of a bit board, we could have a mask that looks like this. And what we could say is, if we take the black pawn bit board and and that with this mask and the result is zero, then we know that there's no black pawn in front of st stopping the white uh, getting to promote the white pawn getting a promotion or in other words we know that this white pawn on X is a passer and what we need to do then is set up these masks that for each square from 0 to 63 so each of the 64 squares the appropriate mask can be used then to end with the black pawns or in the case of looking for uh, a, a white a black passer with the white pawn mask to tell us whether the, very quickly and easily whether the pawn is passed or not and it's actually a really good use of bit boards in this way, which is why I wanted to use them for pawns, because we don't have to do any looping through all of the squares to check whether a pawn is passed or not. We can just do one AND operation with a couple of bit boards to get us the answer. And we'll be doing a similar thing with the isolated pawn mask as well, where this will simply ask, are either of the masks set on the files either side of the file that the pawn in question is on? OK, so let's get around setting up those masks then. I'm going to just basically drop the code in rather brutally and talk through it because it's pretty self-explanatory and simple. The first thing to do is to clear up the and set the masks to zero, which I'm going to do here. I've removed the print bitboard code from the previous video already that was at the bottom here. So we'll set those all to zero. And now we'll, I'll just paste in the loop which actually sets up all of these masks and it's fairly self-explanatory there are a couple of tricky things you have to remember in it basically I take for each square we just iterate in a specific direction so plus eight goes up one rank and we keep going whilst we're our square is less than 64 and set the bit then we go in the minus eight, eight direction for the black past and keep going whilst we're greater than or equal to zero and slightly trickier, of course, is when we have to go to the left or the right, uh, we have to go left 1, so then effectively the plus 7, or the minus 9 direction, so long as we're on a file that's bigger than file A, otherwise we'll be going off the board. And then we go in the plus 8 or minus 8 direction, as is indicated by these here, and set the bits, and the opposite's done with the file H as well. And you have to be careful if you're typing this all out by hand and trying to do it yourself, that you remember when we're using our files board to get the file we need the 120 base square index not the 64 base square index speaking from experience earlier so I've got a print board print bit board statement now at the bottom here just to run this uh, very quickly just to show you and I've just realized I haven't set the console up so I'm just going to do that now sorry about that and I've just run make and then vice. And what you can see here is we're printing the black past mask. So the last one will be for a black pawn effectively on h8 here, 
which of course isn't ever possible, but we've set the mask up anyway. And you can see that we end with all of these X's here. And as I scroll back up through all of the boards, you can see how the bit masks are set up there. It's not very, you can have a look yourself by downloading the code and, and printing it out. But the masks look okay to me at first glance anyway. So the next thing I'll do is I'll just very quickly print out the white past mask as well, just to check that that looks all right, because I haven't done it yet. So we'll just run make and vice again. And let's have a look. And yes, the white is also looking all right as well. It's basically the mirror upside down version of the black parser. So just to reiterate, in this case here, if we had a white pawn on G3 here, we would and the black pawns with this mask. And if there was a pawn at any of these squares X, it would be non-zero and we would know that the pawn isn't passed. And the last thing to do just for completeness is to check the isolated pawn mask. And I'll make this again and run. OK, and here you can clearly see the isolated pawn mask is also correctly set up. Good, so that's it for this video then. In the next video I don't quite want to go into adding these features into the evaluation yet because I want to go back into our board function and actually add in something called a mirror function that we can use to check that our evaluation stays symmetrical when we're adding features into the evaluation because believe me it's extremely easy to make a simple mistake and obviously it doesn't get caught in the evaluation by causing a problem, it just gives an incorrect score. So we'll write a function that can mirror the board and we can then evaluate the position and then the mirror of the position and check the scores are equal. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.